Well, we returned here to Pomein Estuary, and this fascinating estuary that sits behind me is home to some of the most interesting creatures. And we were here about a month ago when Neville Aleph gave us a ring and told us to come up quickly and observe the incredible mating behavior of the pharaoh cuttlefish. This is a return a month later, and the cuttlefish eggs were definitely the focus of my attention during this first week. I came across this tiny Malabar rock cod on one of my last dives here in the estuary. A pair of these tiny Malabar rock cod really began to get really, really comfortable with me being there. So as soon as I came across these Malabar rock cod, I knew that I was pretty much in the vicinity of the cuttlefish eggs. They're quite interesting little fish and they're quite voracious predators. There's absolutely no fear within these fish and quite often they turn to look at themselves in the port I suspect. This quite interesting behavior continued for about 15 to 20 minutes as this Malabar rock cod just twisted and turned right in front of the camera housing. So eventually, after being pretty distracted by the Malabar rock cod, I continued my search and just a little further ahead, we came across the tiny patch of cuttlefish eggs. This area used to be probably three square meters of just cuttlefish eggs. At the moment, it's reduced to 10 or 15% of the original quantity. The eggs that are still here are quite developed and inside one can see the tiny little cuttlefish really beginning to develop. They're exact replicas of the adults. And as I begin to drift a little bit closer to home to end the dive, we came across another type of cuttlefish egg. These are slightly different, they're not tiny single eggs as what we've seen before, which belongs to the pharaoh cuttlefish. These are a different type of squid. These are relatively long finger length tubes and inside we find up to five or six different eggs. These weren't here originally when we dived in this area about a month ago and these have been laid subsequently. And this patch of cuttlefish eggs is probably about one square meter Inside these long tubes, you can see there are a couple eggs laid with inside and they're nowhere near as developed as the cuttlefish eggs which we had just been looking at. I suspect these have probably only been laid just a couple days ago. It's quite interesting how two very similar species can lay eggs that look so completely different to each other. This has obviously got something to do with how they have adapted to their specific environments. Now this hermit crab almost seems to be custodian over the sponge. He doesn't seem to be predating on any of the eggs itself, nor on the sponge. But this got me thinking that this is probably a good opportunity to have a closer look and see what predation is actually taking place on these eggs. Here in this egg, there's a tiny snail attached to it. These shells are predators and they often predate on other shells, but they do predate on any living or dying matter that they can get their hands, so to speak, onto. 
Also here is this tiny curry. Now this curry has this beautiful little mantle that spreads all the way up over the top of it. In the front it has this tiny little proboscis and this is what it picks up any food with. On a close inspection I noticed this scorpion fish. He too just seems to be sitting very, very camouflaged right in the middle of this area of eggs. You can see his eye in the middle and pretty much right to frame and the dorsal fin is right near the top. Now perhaps he's here to predate on the other fish that move into the area to eat the eggs and in an indirect way he would end up protecting these eggs. And there alongside was a second tiny scorpion fish. If you can see the comparison of the size of eggs, the scorpion fish is probably only about three to four centimeters long and it's very, very tiny. And ultimately, what I was here to check on was how healthy these eggs are. And you can see the tiny little cuttlefish inside and they're beginning to really resemble their adult parents. When I was driving down here, the, the water looked really, really clean and I was quite excited about getting into the water, but once I was in the water, as you can see, it was a completely different story and uh, the visibility was probably between two and maybe three and a half, four meters. There's quite a lot of fish around. Um, I saw quite a few Hottentots floating around and quite a few krill. These guys obviously are a huge food source for most of the animals that you find on this west coast. Swimming further out, I found that the water was starting to get a bit cleaner and I did get a bit more excited and hoped that uh, this was the case further and further out to sea. But as soon as you found any sort of structure, it kind of kicked up all the sediment off the bottom. Then you can see how the, the kelp is getting hammered in the surge. Unfortunately, it was blue Hottentots today and a couple of West Coast rock lobsters, which were the only animals that I could find and get a half a decent shot of. It was just the conditions were really bad today. It's not like this every day. And uh, hopefully the conditions will improve as um, time goes on.